and uh, that's and, and that and the 2000 and uh, uh, the 1996 Iron Bowl. Can you guys all hear me right now? No sound at all. So you have, have, let me ask you guys this: Have you been able to hear anything I've said? Okay. All right. All right. Let me start over again because I didn't have something pushed in, and I do apologize. I just am. <laughs> I'm amazed that you guys hung around. <laughs> And um, and did not hear anything I said. You hung in. I'm going to start this thing over again from the very beginning because obviously you did not hear anything that I said, and I do apologize. I got a brand new system here, so let me start over again from the very beginning. I'm going to give you my five reasons <laughs> why. It, look, we're going to be here late tonight, so it, it's all good, I guess. Uh, five reasons why Alabama wants to beat and Nick Saban wants to beat Auburn. <laughs> and I got to sit here and laugh for a second because you guys could not hear me and you were over here talking to me like this. So uh, I'm going to start from the beginning again. And I'm going to pull this up. But let me start from here. And I do apologize. Like I said, I got a brand new system, so I'm, 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 this is the first time I've worked it in. And so basically I, there was a button that I didn't push, so totally on me. All right, guys, let me start from the beginning and tell you why there are five reasons why Alabama wants to beat the Auburn Tigers. First off, it's this, is that in this state, we love football. And if you don't beat Auburn, it's, it's hard to survive in Tuscaloosa, right? Nick Saban lives in Alabama. And he knows that to, to beat Auburn, it makes it a lot easier to live around here. A lot of coaches have come to town, and they have not beaten Auburn, and it has made things very, very difficult on them because they haven't been able to beat the Auburn Tigers. Here's Mike Shula. You know, he did a decent job as Alabama's head coach, but the problem is is that because he didn't beat Auburn, uh, things did not go well for him. You know, and, and that's just kind of the way it's always been here. Um, you know, Mike Shula really helped Alabama kind of climb that ladder, you know, and, and try to get over the hump, but he was 0-4 against the Auburn Tigers. I remember going to Galette's before a football game, and, Pete, and the Auburn fans were in town, and they had this shirt, like, keep Mike Shula. And, and, and they won that football game, right? They, they, he was 0-4 against them. If you don't beat Alabama as head coach, things in this town do not go really well. you got to be able to win this football game to be successful. You know, Mike Shula wasn't able to do that. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, Bill, that um, Mel Ma uh, Mal Moore went out and hired Nick Saban because, you know, it, living in Alabama, when you lose this football game, things, they're just not really comfortable. And so, I, I, you know, I think that one of the biggest reasons that Alabama is having so much success right now is that he went out and, and, and found – the right head coach. Here's another coach, and you guys saw this before because it was on there, and, and now it is again. Bill Curry was coach at Alabama. He came in after Ray Perkins. So it was Bear Bryant, Ray Perkins, Bill Curry. He was 0-3 against Auburn. Someone threw a brick through his window, he said, at, 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 and I believe it happened um, when he was head coach. You lose to Auburn here, and, I mean, look, it's just it, it is really not a fun place to be when you lose to the Auburn Tigers. Bill Curry lost to Auburn, and it made life for him uh, not real comfortable uh, as uh, the Alabama head coach. And I've, I still feel like that, you know, like, and I've talked to him before, he, he's not a big fan of Alabama. Like, he, his time at Alabama did not go well. Uh, he was not really loved as the head coach. And I think the reason why is because, you know, in those three years, he just couldn't figure out a way to beat them. And when you're the head coach at Alabama, you know, and if you don't beat Auburn, people don't like that. And it makes it very difficult 
to uh, to be successful. But let me bring on this guy. I'm going to add him to the stream. You guys saw this before. Obviously, you couldn't hear me, but now you can. That's Gene Stallings. Gene Stallings was five and two in the Iron Bowl. Even his first year, I, I remember talking to Jay Barker, who was a quarterback for Alabama, won the 92 National Championship, talking about that team. You know, they went, they started slow. He was the coach of the Phoenix Cardinals in the NFL. He's a former Alabama player. He comes in, starts to get these guys to believe in what he's doing. And then once he had those guys on board, they started winning football games, right? One of the football games they won that year, that first year he was there, was the Iron Bowl. After that, you know, he's rolling. And I talked about it a second ago, and I'm going to bring my picture back on again. When, when, when Gene was the head coach at Alabama in 96, his very last game was the Iron Bowl at Legion Field. A, t- a 24-23 win over the, uh, over the Auburn Tigers when it was the Iron Bowl. Half of the stadium was Auburn, half of the stadium was Alabama. That was the first game I ever went to. First game I ever went to, first college game I ever went to, as a matter of fact. And, um, you know, as an Alabama student, I just could not believe the atmosphere there that day. And let me um, let me take him off here and show you guys my picture. I still have a picture of my, my buddy Justin and I at the football game. I mean, it was really just phenomenal. Like the, the entire Iron Bowl, see that right there? The entire Iron Bowl experience when it was in Birmingham was amazing. You know, there was the the Tide and Tiger, which was that bar that was like right next to the stadium. And then you would go there and, and I mean, literally half of the stadium would be Auburn and half of the stadium would be Alabama and, and Legion Field. I mean, it's not a, it, I, I, want, I don't want to say it's a dump, but you know, it, like when people got crazy in there, the upper deck swayed. I always thought like maybe the upper deck might fall in on somebody, right? But that's what made it great. It, it, it really was. Like, I heard stories about what RFK Stadium was back when the Redskins were a great team. And they were winning Super Bowls. And they used to talk about the upper deck swing. That's how the Iron Bowl was. Like, if Auburn was ahead, their side was swing. If Alabama was ahead, their side was swing. There's no other college football rivalry that's like the Iron Bowl. And the passion that both sides fans have for this football game. That's why Nick Saban wants to win this football game. You got to live here. People are going to be, you think he hasn't heard about the fact that Auburn won that football game last year? I mean, that's all we talk about around here. But there was one guy who coached in this game, who played at Alabama. For whatever reason, this guy got it. There was a guy that like owned Auburn. And a guy that never that, that just didn't let them kind of off the hook. Like he 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 wasn't looking at them going, okay, you know what? We feel sorry for him. No. You know who that is. Paul Bear Bryant, 19 and 5 against Auburn. Called him the Cow College. Went into the football game against Auburn and and was absolutely motivated to win that game. Did not lose it much. He's one of the greatest coaches of all time. Um, you know, you're talking about a guy that played at Alabama when Alabama was terrible at football. He said, mama was calling. He came back home to coach and, you know, all those championships that he won beating Auburn was always a priority in those football games. So that is number four on my list. And for those of you that were here early, you realize we didn't have sound for a while. Uh, that excuse me, that was number five on my list. Now we go to number four on my list, and I'm going to take him on there for a second. Now I'm going to take the bear off. It's, it, look, no one wants the bear off and me on. <laughs> number four on my list is easy. I mean, this is Bama Insider. This is the Alabama rival site. We cover recruiting better than anyone else. And I want you guys, whether you're Alabama, whether you're Auburn, whether you're a college football fan, it's Sunday night. People are watching the NFL. We're talking about college football. Thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we appreciate you guys more than you know. Interstate talent, recruiting. You know, recruiting the blue chip in-state talent in this Yellowhammer state is crucial. And the only way that you're going to win championships is you're going to have to win on recruiting day. We all know that. We all know that. 
And that's what makes this game tough because you got to go out there and win this game. If you don't win the recruiting, I remember when Cadillac Williams grew up an Alabama fan and went to Auburn. That was a bad sign for the Crimson Tide. And that and he ended up, you know, being on an undefeated team at Auburn, right? That's what I'm talking about. You got to be able to win on National Signing Day and you got to lock down the best players in state, you know. Uh, Alabama and Nick Saban have done a nice job of doing that, but Auburn's been a thorn in their side, and they really have to be because if they're not, they're going to fall off the table. You know, so so winning the recruiting battles is a big part of being successful. I mean, you talk about some of the battles that we've seen already this year. Uh, Jaquincy, McKinstry, Kool-Aid picked Alabama over Auburn. You got Jeremiah Williams, who's committed to Florida. Andrew Bone, our recruiting expert, feels like he's going to end up at Alabama. Auburn's trying to get in on the mix on him. And then you got two guys that are committed to Auburn right now, Lee Hunter and Amani Goodwin. Alabama still wants to flip those guys. And so if they can figure out a way to get those guys to come to Tuscaloosa, they're going to do that. You know, they want to do that, and, and it's really important – to the success of the program to get the guys in state. And I'll say this too, when Shula was head coach at Alabama, he did a nice job of recruiting. You know, he was no slouch, but he did not win the recruiting in-state battles. And when you play in this Iron Bowl, the in-state guys, they get it. They've been around it. They grew up with it. You know, you, you, you go outside and you play football when you're a kid. People are talking about Alabama and Auburn. Who won the Iron Bowl? You know, like it, Alabama and Auburn could be – I don't know, like could be terrible in a season. But if you win the Iron Bowl, people are talking about it. And once in a while that happens. You know, maybe the team that that isn't that great wins the Iron Bowl. And, you know, and you're like, okay, well, you know what? Uh, it's, it's a great year for them, you know? So winning the Iron Bowl is absolutely a huge part of it. All right, let's click over to number three. The number three we- reason why Nick Saban wants to win Alabama has nothing to do with him. It has to do with Mac Jones. Mac Jones wants to win this more, absolutely more than Nick Saban. More than Nick Saban because of his performance last year against Auburn, right? Auburn won the football game last year. Um, and and in, that, in that game, it was a contest where Mac threw two pick sixes the other way, right? And... Auburn took advantage of that and and won the game. And, and, and if it wouldn't have been for those pick sixes, Alabama, I think, would have won that football game. So I think that, like, the motivation that he has going into this game is there are a lot of people that when he threw the two interceptions last year and lost that game against Auburn were pretty concerned that he wasn't going to be able to be successful as an Alabama quarterback. And I think that's one of the reasons why he was so motivated to get better and and beat Alabama. Uh, I mean, excuse me, and beat Auburn in this game this year and be better as Alabama's quarterback. So I think Mac Jones really wants this game. You know, you can forget about all the Heisman talk. You can forget about the national championship game. If you're the, if you're the quarterback at Alabama, you want to beat Auburn. That, there's just no other way around it. So I feel like going into this game that Mac is very motivated to win it. And I think that, that the way that things turned out last year uh, are obviously one of the reasons why, because it just it did not go his way, and it didn't go Alabama's way. And they played a good game, but they didn't play good enough to win. So I'm guessing that for him and his legacy and his time at Alabama – that beating uh, the Auburn Tigers is important. We got two more reasons why Nick Saban wants to beat the Auburn Tigers. I'm going to take your calls after that, 205-850-0883. So I want you guys to uh, think about your questions. And again, I do apologize that I did not have the sound up um, on our on our conversation here to start the show. But I appreciate all of you guys that have hung around. And I uh, just want to tell you how much... Uh, all of us really love the fact that you're here with us tonight on a Sunday. Please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, BamaInsider.com, and um, 
and again, I, I'm sorry about that. I'm, I, I just got a brand new system, so I'm still learning it. But it's still awesome to kind of get ready for this Iron Bowl game that's going to happen in Tuscaloosa on Saturday. All right, the number two reason. Are you ready for the number two reason why Alabama wants to beat and Nick Saban, even more so, wants to beat Auburn in the Iron Bowl? It's time to prove again that Gus doesn't have Nick's number. You know, there's a lot of things that have happened in this football game where Gus Malzahn has had success against Nick Saban. And and for, for Gus Malzahn, I feel like for his job security, you know, he's all, all pretty much has to beat Nick Saban, right? And in last year's game, we had that punt situation where the receiver, the punter ran out as a receiver and, and Alabama, uh, you know, ended up, you know, losing the game because basically they, they got a penalty because they didn't know what was going on. Right. And I don't, I, I still don't even understand that whole entire situation other than Nick Saban thought, well, this is illegal to do this. And Gus Malzahn kind of set him up. If Alabama had gotten the ball back last year, I think there's a good chance that Alabama ends up coming down the field and at least scoring a field goal and maybe even scoring a touchdown to win the football game. But obviously that that did not happen. And, you know, they lost the game to Auburn. You know, there was also in these games the thing that a lot of us like to call Auburn Jesus. And that happened at the end of the first half when, you know, Auburn shouldn't have had the extra second on the on the clock to kick a field goal. But for some crazy reason, every time they play, and you can ask Ole Miss and you can ask Arkansas, you know, Georgia a few years ago, like there's always these plays in the game where Auburn catches some crazy break. And and, and now we've just called it Auburn Jesus, you know. And, and the Auburn Jesus play in that game was when obviously they, the half should have been over, but somehow it wasn't. And they end up getting one more play. They kick a field goal. And that turns out to be what they win the game by, you know, the field goal. So we called Auburn Jesus. That happened in the game. And when you're Nick Saban, you go into this contest, you realize that you better be ready for Auburn Jesus, right? Gus Malzahn has had the most success against Nick Saban of any of the coaches in the SEC. He's three and four against Nick Saban. So a win this year puts them four and four. It puts him four and four personally against the greatest coach of all time, right? That that all started in 2000, and you guys remember this, 2013, right? When um, we had the kick six, Alabama had the lead, lost the lead, tried to kick a, or I, it was tied, and then they tried to kick that long field goal, and uh, and Chris Davis returned it for a touchdown. I mean, the, I don't know why in this game crazy things happen. But they do. I mean, go back to 2010 when Auburn, they ended up winning the national championship. But, you know, Mark Ingram fumbles. The ball, like, goes, like, 30 yards on the sideline and, like, never goes out of bounds. Any other time, the ball goes out of bounds. But because it went into the end zone, Auburn gets the football back. It was just like – there just seems to be those games, uh, and I've seen them over the years, where the ball seems to bounce their way. Nick Saban wants to go into this contest against Auburn, and he wants to prove that, you know what, I'm going to dominate this state. I'm going to beat you again. Uh, Alabama's going to be a big favorite in this game, and that the spread may be out already. Honestly, I haven't checked it, but I'm guessing that the spread's going to be a, a big spread in Alabama's favorite. And if, if you're Nick Saban, this is a game you got to win. You're at home. You got the better team. I saw Auburn struggle against Tennessee. Alabama has cut through everyone but Ole Miss like a hot knife through butter. Uh, and, I mean, I just feel like even with Auburn Jesus, if you're Alabama, you got to figure out a, a way to win this ball game. But what is the number one reason that Nick Saban and Alabama need, want to beat the Auburn Tigers? I'm going to tell you that in a second, but first, guys, I want to remind you that our phone lines are going to be open. I'm going to be taking your calls here shortly, 205-850-0883. All of you that were listening and said, hey, man, I can't hear you right now. I love you guys. I can't tell you how much 
Uh, I appreciate you for telling me that. I, I, like I said, I got a brand new system here, so there was something that wasn't pushed. But uh, all of you guys that have kind of been hanging out and uh, yeah, telling me stuff like, turn your volume up. It wasn't a volume issue. It was a button. But um, thank you guys for hanging in there and, and talking Alabama and Auburn Iron Bowl football with us. All right, look, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel, BamaInsider.com. Uh, our channel, BamaInsider.com, uh, is our website, Bama Insider channel on YouTube. I'm Mick Gillespie. Great to have you guys with us. All right, are you guys ready for the number one reason why Nick Saban wants to beat Auburn, has to beat Auburn this week? First, I'm going to tell you that, that Dark's prediction is 56-6. to six. That would not be a very good game if you were Auburn and Alabama beat you like that. The number one reason, though, is along those same lines, Dark, and it is championships. Championships. If you're going to be a national champion, you have to beat the Auburn Tigers. I mean, there's just no other way to put it. I mean, like, this is the biggest game of the season for championships. I, I'm, I mean, like, and the winner of this game always seems to be in the picture for a title. Here's my old broadcast partner, Mike Johnson, right here. Look at him. We uh, worked together for for a couple years talking football. He's kissing the, the old BCS National Championship trophy. That was from 2009, right? And Alabama has figured out a way to win national championships. I mean, I'm just going to pop some of these in here just so you guys can remember. You know, here's here's Nick Saban and the gang after uh, that win against LSU 2011. Remember that? The, the greatest team of all time, the LSU Tigers that year. And then they go into the national championship game in New Orleans, like where it's going to be like the greatest game ever. They're going to it's going to be the best day ever for the Tigers. And and the boys shut them out 21 zip. Right. Alabama always had a problem against Notre Dame, like going back to Bear Bryant, you know, like for whatever reason, the Irish always seem to have Alabama's number. That was before Nick Saban showed up, and then things changed when we saw them down in Miami. Remember that? 2012, there they are, the, the gang back there. Um, I see Dylan Moses, like, you know, talking about another championship with Nick Saban, right? Um, you have to beat Auburn to get to these moments. 2015, you know, you saw Mike Johnson in the picture. Uh, I sat next to Mike in this game right here. And I'll tell you what, there's Kenyon Drake diving into the end zone to hit that pylon. I mean, that's an iconic play at this point. And I'll never forget sitting next to Mike because his hands were so big, he kept hitting me in the back and it hurt. I'm just a little guy compared to him. You know, but... Winning national championships when you come to Alabama, when you're Nick Saban, that's a big part of it, you know. And it's like, you know, here's Tua. You know, I'm putting Tua up there now. 2017, that's five national championships for Alabama. One of the big things that you got to do is you got to get through Auburn to win the championship. Auburn Beat Alabama in 2013 and 2017. Alabama lost the tiebreaker to Auburn. Auburn went on to represent the SEC in the title game. Alabama, 2015, 2014, 15, 16, and 18, won the SEC. They won the SEC, and they beat Auburn en route to doing it. They got past the Tigers. You have to beat the Tigers to win the SEC National Championships 2015, 2017 for Alabama. The crazy thing that you got to remember, and this is one of the, the really the nuttiest uh, statistics that that I have about Alabama's uh, days, you know, since Nick Saban's been there, is that going into the Iron Bowl, going into the Iron Bowl, and it's going to be the case this year too. Four times Alabama has been number one in the country. They're two and two in those football games. So this will be the fifth time that Nick Saban's take, taken a number one team into the, the Iron Bowl. Twice they've been number two in the country, and they're two and zero oh as the number two team. And then last year they were number five in the game, and, and they lost. So 
this is this has been that game. I mean, look, it's not the last game on the schedule this year because you still got Arkansas and potentially LSU before the uh, the things wrap up. But you got to win a championship, whether it be an SEC championship or a national championship. Beating Auburn is a huge, huge part of it. So, um, just remember that when you go into this thing and you're Alabama that beating Auburn is one of the essential parts of of winning a championship. So, all right, let's take your calls now. It's uh, 205-850-0883. I want to hear why you guys think that Alabama is, um, you know, why this game's so important. I'm going to go right into the first call and make sure this thing works. How's it going? Where are you calling from, and do you hear me right now? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, man. You're, you're number, you're numero uno on my new system here. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name's Bailey. I'm from Douglas, Alabama. All right. We'll roll tide, man. Let's, uh, let's talk. What do you think about the Iron Bowl? The Iron Bowl has been the one game I'm always afraid to watch. And it's because of numerous years, the one year is when they we went for a field goal and they took it back 104 yards or something like that and that was the oh, hold on the one year that i remember the most yeah the kick six in 2013 chris davis mm-hmm. yeah i mean like i remember seeing ed reed return a field goal for a touchdown for the ravens you know like before that happened and mm-hmm. i was like when they were lining up to kick that field goal and and let's be honest alabama hasn't had the 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 best field goal kickers over the years but nick saban had a long field goal kicker that season and he thought hey look i'm gonna try this it turned into a disaster and it just feels like ever I, I don't know if it was even before that, but it just feels like ever since then it's been just you know, kind of like you said, like you just never feel comfortable playing these guys. Mm-hmm. They always have a trick up their sleeve. Yeah, like last year. What do you Especially think about this with, year's game? Mm-hmm. This year I think we have a great shot. For the one from what I've seen this year, Auburn's done good in some games, but there's games where they just don't show up. They're not there mentally. Mm-hmm. They're just not ready I, this year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, they, they beat Tennessee yesterday, but I didn't really feel mm-hmm. like they played a great game. You know, I just felt like they were – Tennessee kind of shot themselves in the foot, you know. They they gave up the mm-hmm. interception touchdown and then after that it was it was pretty much over. The Tennessee isn't a great team. They had a really good chance to beat Auburn. Besides Ole Miss, Alabama's been dominant. The, the I'd say the rest of the season mm-hmm. except the first half against Georgia. I agree. And let's see. This year, I think the one thing Alabama has is uh, a quarterback. We have a great quarterback this year. I mean, we did last year with Tua, but there's something about uh, – what's his name? Hold on. I forgot it. Mac. Yeah, Mac Jones. There, there's something about him that makes him so much more different than Tua. He, I know he's not a dual-threat quarterback, but he – he acts like it. He can do so much. He's quick with the ball. He's responsive. He's, I don't. I think the biggest difference between Mac and Tua is that Mac has a better sense of when it's time to throw the football away. Yeah. And I want to hear from you guys too. Uh, Phone lines are open 205 850 Let's talk about the Iron Bowl tonight call in we're 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 into that right now but i just feel like when tua would get into trouble there was always this and i love tua by the way but there was always Mm -hmm. this feeling like hey i'm gonna roll out and try to make something happen here when it might have been smarter just to throw the football away and 
Um, I agree. And and I feel like with Mac, it's like it's more of like, look, if I got to be a game manager in this in this moment, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. And then when and if I'm not, then that's fine too. Mm -hmm. And last week when, I mean, yesterday when Mac Jones threw that interception, he was beating himself up about it because he was not happy with this film. And I remember when I was watching it, they were saying that Nick Saban always thought of him as, I don't remember the guy's name, but compared him to it because he always beat himself up when he didn't do something right. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, look, Mac has had the type of year. Uh, I, I mean, look, I, I didn't even think going into the season that Mac was going to be a Heisman Trophy contender. I just was kind of hoping that he would get it to the point where Bryce Young would take over. And and I've never been more pleasantly wrong. I mean, like, I, I, I mean, Mac, mm -hmm. Mac was ready to be the starting quarterback at Alabama. And you got to give him credit. Like, this guy is motivated to be the best he can possibly be. Mm -hmm. And he had to wait behind Jalen Hurts and Tua mm -hmm. to get to where he is. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. All right, any other points before mm -hmm. we, we let you go tonight? Uh, that's about it. Well, hey, thanks for calling in, and, and we appreciate it. Don't forget, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and uh, and keep watching. Hello. It's going to be a great weekend, uh, Alabama and Auburn, coming up this Saturday. And, you know, we appreciate the call. I mean, look, guys, when you when you talk about this matchup, as the phone lines are open right now, 205-850-0883, I want to hear what you think about the Iron Bowl. Um and I see that the comment section is absolutely fired up right now. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I can put on here. Um, here's one from Kimberly. Hopefully it's not anything bad. She says, Alabama will beat Auburn this year. I'm not listening to hater roll. <laughs> Look, I think Alabama is going to beat Auburn too. I mean, they're going to be a big favorite. But the thing that they're going to have to do, Kimberly and everyone else watching, is that they're going to have to be ready to go when that time comes. I mean, like – that Auburn's not going to roll over in this football game. Alabama's going to have to play four quarters, which I thought they did yesterday against Kentucky. You know, when it could have been one of those situations where, hey, you know, we should throw our hands in the air and say, you know what, um, we, we got this big lead, we can turn it off. Alabama just refused to turn it off. You know, and, and when it was great to see Bryce Young come in and and do his thing as well, um, she says it's going to be 60 to 10. <laughs> that would be I – mean, look, I, I wouldn't be surprised because I, I feel like if you're Nick Saban and you have a chance to put these guys away, you you got to put you got to put your, your um, pedal to the metal. I mean, this is, a, this is a rivalry where you're going to be going up against these guys for a lot of different players around the state of Alabama. So you want to win those players. You want to win the recruiting battle. You know what? Defeating Auburn – and, and, and causing issues as far as their athletic department's concerned. I mean, it just seems like Gus Malzahn is perpetually on the hot seat, right? Constantly. And, and no matter what happens, he can't ever get – it's like he gets a great win. As Tawny says, it's going to be 52-6 to six, Alabama. Every time you turn around, there's another issue for him. And he's not able to get over that hump. So, um, you know, I'm thinking that, you know, if you're Alabama, you go into this game, you try to get on them early right now. Jay says, right now, Alabama's 25.5 point favorite. Uh, Jay, I got to look that up, man. I mean, I'm not even trying to dispute you, but that is a huge, that would be a huge spread against Auburn. So I got to get on ESPN and look, I, I mean, I mean, I know this Alabama team, um, will get on you quick, but that is a, wow, that'd be a huge spread. Let's see what I got them at right now. Um, go to next week. Yeah. 
Yep, he's right. He is right. 25 point spread. Thanks, Jay. I can't even believe that. I mean, a 25 point spread, like, gosh, they, this is a good team, Auburn. It's not like they're like a last place team like Kentucky or something. But Jay on the spot again, telling, I mean, like, I, I'm, I feel bad, Jay. I should have just listened to what you were saying. 25.5 points. ESPN has him at 24 and a half. That's still crazy. That is still crazy. I want to hear from you guys, 205-850-0883, if you want to talk about Alabama and Auburn. Uh, I, I know you guys are starting to line up your score. Uh, Randy Williams says it's going to be 42-20. That means Auburn covers. Gelato says uh, uh, maybe too many points. Look, you get 25 points in the Iron Bowl. I mean, I feel like – and I went 0 for 4 on the Tide uh, on our um, – uh, our show, you know, Bama Insider Tailgate Show this this Friday. So don't don't count on me to help you out with your picks. But I I was absolutely wrong on that. Um, fifty two to seventeen. Willow, I I don't that would be. Hey, look, I hope you guys are right. I I hope you guys are right because. I think that if Alabama beat Auburn like that, and Jay says, I'm as shocked as you. Jay, I'm shocked, man. I, I mean, you put that up there. I thought, this guy might be messing with me here. Nope. You got it. You're right. I mean, that's – wow, man. I thought it would be like maybe a two-touchdown spread. That's, t <laughs> that's three touchdowns and a field goal that they think Alabama's going to win by. So, I mean, I, I'm guessing that if I'm Mac Jones, I'm going into that game, and I'm 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 remembering the two interceptions from last year. I'm pretty motivated by how everything went down, and I'm I'm trying to win, um, and basically, you know, bring back supremacy in in the SEC. And and the other part about this game. Let me put that up there for you guys. And you know what I'm talking about here. This is this is Nick Saban trying to talk to the officials about Auburn Jesus. Jacob's talking about Patrick Sertain uh, on Seth Williams on offense. That'll be interesting. Um, here's the one I wanted to put up too. Kevin from... Lebanon, Tennessee, Roll Tide up there in uh, the Volunteer State. This is Nick Saban last year in that game, and he's trying to say, hey, wh what do you mean these guys are getting to kick a field goal? They, 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 there's no, they're supposed to be a three-second runoff at the end of the half on, a, you know, on this play. You're giving them that extra second so they can kick a field goal. So, I mean, <laughs> pretty ridiculous. Pretty ridiculous. Um, just kind of skimming through your comments here. I think that a 24 and a half, 25 point spread is, is really crazy for Alabama. But at the same time, I, I think if you're the Crimson Tide that, um, you know, going into this game, that should just continue to motivate you to, uh, to be the best you can possibly be. All right, guys, I want to thank all of you for joining us on tonight's show. We're going to be back tomorrow night with Monday Night Quarterback. That's when our entire crew will be here to break down what happened in the SEC, talk about the Iron Bowl, and, and, and you know, kind of do this thing again. Um, again, I gave you five great reasons why Alabama, Nick Saban. All right, here's Tawny. From Texas, Roll Tide, I got you. Um This this one right here, Willow, I gotta g agree with you. You when Alabama beats Auburn, normally it's just so bad that they can't even <laughs> they can't even go the the officials can't even like make a difference. Like it's just like hey, they're just trying to run that clock off in the fourth quarter. But anyway, love all you guys. Really appreciate you joining me for my show. Uh, thumbs up. I would take some more of your calls, and if you if you I'm gonna try. I, maybe I'll try to get this thing fixed for you real quick. I don't know what happened here. But something did, and 
for some reason, I, I don't have the setup anymore to be able to take your calls. So I'm, I'm looking at it right now, and I'm like, I, I don't know enough to fix it, but I'm going to try to, and if I can, I'm going to jump back in here, and maybe you guys can call in. If not, if I can't get this thing going, then then it's going to have to be tomorrow. Yeah, so I'm still learning this whole new system, but look, 